Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos, we talked about serum osmolality, urine osmolality, and the osmolar gap. We talked about amino acid profiles for inborn errors of metabolism. Today, we'll talk about some urine tests that can help us diagnose tumors like pheochromocytoma, which can lead to episodic or persistent hypertension. But it's not just pheochromocytoma, it can also use these tests to diagnose neuroblastoma, ganglioblastoma, ganglioneuroma, etc. What are we looking for here? We're looking for catecholamines, which include three things, dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine, or their metabolites, such as metanephrine, normetanephrine, homovanillic acid, and vanillomandelic acid, also known as 3-hydroxy-4-methoxy mandelic acid. Now let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Pheochromocytoma, where's the problem? It's a tumor in my adrenal medulla, which secretes catecholamines, dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. Do not confuse the adrenal medulla with the adrenal cortex. The cortex is the outer crust. It has zona glomerulosa, which makes aldosterone, fasciculata, which makes cortisol, and reticularis, which makes adrenal androgens. To learn more about these subjects, you can check out my biology playlist or my physiology playlist. Note that the function of the cortex is way different from the function of the medulla. The cortex obeys the pituitary gland, ACTH. The medulla does not care about your pituitary at all. The cortex, for the most part, is not part of your autonomic nervous system, but the medulla is. But hey, metacosis, if the cortex and the medulla are that different, why are they located near each other? If one is for fight flight and the other is for salt and sugar, how come they are close to each other? Let me tell you why. Do you know the ACTH that comes from the adrenal cortex? Its main function is to stimulate the fasciculata of the cortex to make cortisol. Did you know that the cortisol stimulates the lovely enzyme that converts norepinephrine, which comes from the medulla, into epinephrine? Moreover, it was recently discovered that the same ACTH can actually stimulate the adrenal medulla to a certain extent to make more dopa, which becomes dopamine, which becomes norepinephrine, which becomes epinephrine. How do you convert norepinephrine into epinephrine? Add a methyl group, and the enzyme needed is a methyl transferase. Do you remember this? This is my lovely spinal cord. Here is a preganglionic fiber, and then there is the ganglion. After the ganglion, there is usually a postganglionic fiber. But the adrenal medulla is a special type of ganglion, which is not followed by a postganglionic fiber. Instead, it acts as a gland. It will dump those hormones directly into the bloodstream. But make no mistake about it, the fiber before it is still cholinergic preganglionic, i.e. it secretes acetylcholine. And the receptor is ganglionic, which is nicotinic sub N, N for neuron because this is the nervous system it's part of your sympathetic nervous system what is happening in the adrenal medulla sing the song with me phenylalanine tyrosine dopa dopamine norepinephrine epinephrine or phenylalanine tyrosine dopa dopamine noradrenaline adrenaline hydroxylase hydroxylase but from dopa to dopamine you need the dopa decarboxylase and if you remember my biochemistry lectures decarboxylases require vitamin b6 while hydroxylases usually require vitamin c just like the hydrolase needed to make collagen do you remember scurvy yeah. Then you have norepinephrine. From norepinephrine to epinephrine, you will add a methyl group, and the enzyme is a methyl transferase. Where did you get the methyl group from? From a methyl group donor known as Uncle Sam, which came from methionine. So here's an amino acid, and here's another amino acid. That's how you end up with epinephrine. After dopamine has performed its function, it gets degraded into homovanillic acid or HVA. After norepinephrine performs its job, it will get metabolized and degraded into normetanephrine, and then normetanephrine will become vanillomandelic acid. As for the epinephrine, it will give you metanephrine, not normetanephrine, because nor is for the nor, but epi goes with the metanephrine, and then the metanephrine will also give you VMA. A tumor of the adrenal medulla is known as what? Pheochromocytoma. Patients with pheochromocytoma might have pallor. You know why? Because when the adrenal medulla is busy making catecholamines, it will forget to make melanin because all of your raw materials and all of your resources are converted to this path of making catecholamines 
forgetting about melanin, so you can get pallor. Moreover, the catecholamines are potent vasoconstrictors. When I constrict blood vessels, they get narrower. Less blood is going to your skin, you appear pale. Pheochromocytoma, the six P's. Paroxysmal, episodic attacks of what? Hypertension, palpitations, or racing heartbeats. Perspiration, which means sweating. Pain, I mean headache and pallor. During the acute attack, elevated epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamines are expected. Elevated metanephrine and normetanephrines are expected. Elevated VMA and HVA are also expected. But hey, medicosis, why do we normally measure the VMA and the HVA, not just serum epinephrine? Because when you measure the VMA and HVA in the urine, they will be way higher than just measuring epinephrine, giving you a more accurate result, less likely to get false negatives. Moreover, when you measure these doofuses in the urine, they can cover you for a long time because these are metabolites. Even after the acute episodes, you will still have these because they get metabolized into VMA and HVA. But if you rely solely on measuring epinephrine in the blood, then you gotta catch the patient exactly during the acute episodes. Otherwise, it will be so hard. That's why we prefer the 24-hour urine test to cover you, whether it's the acute episode or after the episode. And if these P's are not enough, also EPO can go up, which causes secondary polycythemia with elevated red blood cell count, hemoglobin, and hematic. These catecholamines are powerful vasoconstrictors because they are alpha-1 agonists. They also stimulate beta-1 and increase your heart rate and contractility. Pheochromocytoma is the most common adrenal tumor of the medulla in adults. Don't forget your P is at the seventh P, which is polycythemia secondary to EPO. How do you treat pheochromocytoma? Well, you have to do it in this order. Alpha blockers first, like phenoxybenzamine. Look at this. Phenoxybenzamine has 16 letters, just like pheochromocytoma. For the phi, give phenoxybenzamine. The beta blocker is usually propranolol and then surgical tumor resection. Remove the freaking pheochromocytoma tumor of the adrenal medulla. Why do I have to do them in this order? Because during surgery, you will squeeze the gland. It's inevitable. Once you squeeze the gland, the gland will dish tons of epinephrine or epinephrine dopamine into the bloodstream. If you haven't blocked the alphas and betas yet, the patient will collapse during surgery from severe hypertension and tachycardia. You do not want this. So before going to surgery, you gotta block the alphas and betas. Okay, I get it. But why do you need to block the alpha receptors before the beta receptors? Because during surgery, I'll squeeze the gland, releasing epinephrine. If you have not blocked the alpha, all of this epinephrine will act on the alpha, severe vasoconstriction, severe hypertension, and the patient will crash. So you block the alpha first, then you block the beta, then you go to surgery. If you want to block the alphas and betas together, that's okay as well. So dopamine gets metabolized into HVA, norepinephrine becomes norepinephrine, and then VMA, epinephrine becomes metanephrine and then VMA. What if I have a problem with dopamine beta hydroxylase? What if I have a deficiency here? Well, if you have deficiency here, you will not have norepinephrine. And everything before it will go up. Since you have more dopamine, you'll have more HVA. So one of the causes of high HVA is congenital dopamine beta hydroxylase deficiency. Or severe scurvy. Oh, it makes sense. That's why you gotta make sure that your vitamin C level is optimal before taking the lab results. And the doctor will tell you do not eat citrus fruits two to three days before collecting the urine sample. Why is that? Because vitamin C will increase nor epinephrine and increase VMA. How did we convert the dopamine into HVA? How did we convert nor epinephrine into VMA? And how did we convert epinephrine into VMA? Well, it's all about the MAO and the COMT enzymes. But if the patient is taking MAO inhibitor, which is a class of medication, what's going to happen? Low HVA, low VMA, low VMA, and low metanephrines as well, and nor metanephrines. So the doctor will tell you, before giving me the sample, make sure you're not taking any MAO inhibitors or COMT inhibitors. Urine catecholamines in a nutshell. Why do you do the test? Because I want to diagnose tumors such as pheochromocytoma, neuroblastoma, ganglioblastoma, or ganglioneuromas. All of them have elevated urine catecholamines, and some of these cause 
hypertension as you can imagine. Where do you get the sample from? Usually urine, 24 hour urine because the nature of the disease is usually episodic. So I prefer to measure it throughout the day to draw a more accurate picture. However, recent advances in chromatography allowed us to measure plasma-free metanephrines which is way more accurate than the urine test. What are the interfering factors? Caffeine and anything that has caffeine, including tea, coffee, chocolate, even vanilla, licorice, all of them increase VMA. Stress, strenuous exercise, starvation increases VMA. Many drugs increase catecholamines and their metabolites like VMA or HVA. Other drugs do the opposite. So the doctor will tell you, before the test, avoid caffeine, avoid coffee, avoid tea, avoid vanilla, chocolate, licorice, even bananas and citrus fruit. Avoid aspirin and avoid antihypertensive medications because they interfere with the epinephrine or epinephrine, metanephrines, etc. Do you want to learn about hypertension of pregnancy, preeclampsia, eclampsia? How about gestational diabetes? How about peripartum cardiomyopathy, acute fatty liver disease of pregnancy, intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, twin twin transfusion syndrome? Well, you can learn more about all of these topics by downloading my OBGYN high yields course. It will also discuss many tumors of the female genital tract. Get it today at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellis, where medicine makes perfect sense.